Hey guys, my name is Tom and welcome to part 10 of my C Sharp networking tutorial series. In this one, we're going to take the items we added in the last video, make them explosive, and let players throw them at each other. Of course, there will be links to the code on GitHub and an invite link to the Discord server in the description if you have any questions or run into problems, so make sure to check those out. Before we start letting players blow each other up, we need to address two things I overlooked in the last tutorial. Firstly, players are able to continue shooting even while they're dead and waiting to respawn. We can fix this quite easily by simply checking if the player's health is less than or equal to zero at the beginning of the player class's shoot method. If it is, we'll just return out of the method and that'll prevent any shots from being fired. Secondly, I realized item spawners would sometimes let the player pick up an item even if it didn't currently have one. This allowed you to get the maximum number of items much quicker than what should be possible. This is also a very simple fix. In the item spawner class's onTriggerEnter method, just add an extra condition to the first if statement that checks whether or not the spawner has an item. With that taken care of, let's start throwing projectiles. Open up the client's packet class and add a player throw item element to the client packet's enum. In the client send class, add a new method and create the packet. Much like the packet we used to let the server know that a client shot, we'll include the player's view direction. We'll send this packet from the player controller class's update method when the right mouse button is clicked. In the server project, add a new script called projectile. Open it up and remove its contents. Then add a static dictionary to help us keep track of all projectiles as well as an int to store the ID of the next projectile to be created. We'll also need fields for the ID, the attached rigid body, the ID of the player who threw the projectile, the initial force vector, the explosion radius, and the explosion damage. Inside a start method, we'll assign a value to the ID field, increment next projectile ID, and add the projectile to the dictionary. This process is pretty much identical to how we managed IDs for item spawners in the last video. Next, add the initial force to the rigid body and start a coroutine. We'll create the actual method itself in a moment. Add a fixed update method which we'll use later, as well as an initialize method. Inside, we'll assign values to the initial force and thrown by player fields. Below, add a method called explode. This will be called when the projectile collides with something, at which point we'll want to damage any nearby players. To do this, we'll grab an array of all the nearby colliders using the physics.checksphere method, and then we'll loop through those colliders. If any of them have the player tag, we'll grab the player component and call its take damage method. After the for each loop, call the destroy method on the game object to remove the projectile from the scene. Finally, we'll set up the coroutine. After waiting 10 seconds, we'll call the explode method to make sure that the projectile doesn't linger in the scene in case a player throws it out of our arena and into the void. Below our fixed update method, add an on collision enter method inside which we'll simply call explode. Now at the top of the network manager class, add a game object field to hold a reference to the projectile prefab. At the bottom, create a method to instantiate a projectile. Make sure to offset the spawn position so that it doesn't collide with the player that's throwing it. At the top of the player class, we'll add a field to store the player's throw force. This value needs to be quite high, otherwise the projectile will simply drop straight to the ground when it's spawned. Further down, add a throw item method. Inside, we'll check if the player is alive to prevent him from throwing projectiles while respawning. Then we need to check if the player actually has an item to throw, in which case we'll decrement the item amount and instantiate a projectile. We still need to handle the player throw item packet, so create a method to do that in the server handle class. Inside, read out the player's view direction and then call his throw item method. Then open the packet class and add the player throw item element to the client packet's enum. Finally, make sure to add the packet ID and the corresponding packet handler method to the server's packet handler's dictionary. In Unity, create a sphere in the scene. Reduce its scale, add a rigid body, and set its collision detection to continuous. Then attach the projectile script, drag the rigid body component into the appropriate slot, Rename the sphere, drag it into the prefabs folder, and delete it from the scene hierarchy. Don't forget to assign the network manager's projectile prefab field. With that, we have most of the logic done. If you have an item, right clicking will now throw it, however you won't actually see anything. That's because the projectile only exists on the server so far, and we haven't done anything to inform clients about it, so the projectiles are essentially invisible. 
To solve this, we're going to add three elements to the server packet enum. In the server send class, create a spawn projectile method. Inside, we'll write the projectile ID and its position to the packet, and then send it through TCP. Copy this method twice and rename the duplicates accordingly. Also, make sure to correctly change the packet ID, otherwise you'll run into problems. Now that we've got these methods, we can finish off the projectile class. In the start method, call server send .spawn projectile, call server send .projectile position in fixed update, and call server send .projectile exploded in the explode method. All that's left is to handle these packets on the client side. I'm going to copy the three elements we added to the server packets enum so I don't have to rewrite them. Open the client project and create a new projectile manager script. Open that up, but before we do anything else, let's add the three elements to the client side server packets enum. Remove the projectile manager's contents and add fields for the ID and explosion prefab. Then create an initialize method which will simply set the ID and an explode method. Inside, set the projectile's position, instantiate a copy of the explosion prefab, and then destroy the projectile. In the game manager, we'll add a static dictionary to store all existing projectiles by their ID, as well as a field for the projectile prefab. At the bottom, create a spawn projectile method inside which we'll instantiate a copy of the projectile prefab, call the attached projectile manager's initialize method, and add it to the dictionary. In the client handle class, it's time to handle our packets. In the spawn projectile method, we'll read out the ID, the position, and the ID of the player who threw it. Then we'll spawn a projectile and decrement the player's item count. In the projectile position method, we'll also read out the ID and the position, and then we'll use that information to set the projectile's position. Finally, in the projectile exploded method, we'll once again read out the ID and position, and then call the projectile's explode method. To finish it off, we just need to add the packet IDs and their corresponding packet handler methods to the client's packet handler's dictionary. Back in Unity, create a sphere, rename it, attach the projectile manager script, reduce its scale, and move it into the prefabs folder. Between the last tutorial and this one, I created an explosion prefab which I'm going to assign to the projectile's explosion prefab slot. It's just a basic particle system, nothing even remotely fancy, but pause the video here and take a moment to set up your own particle system. Back in the scene view, we can remove the projectile game object from the hierarchy. Finally, assign the projectile prefab to the game manager's projectile prefab slot. We can also create a new material for the projectile just to give it some color. If you were to run this now, you'd actually get an error as soon as you try to throw the first projectile. This is because in the client handle class's spawn projectile method, we're reading out an integer for the ID of the player who threw the item, but I actually forgot to write that integer into the packet on the server side, so make sure to fix that. Testing it now, you'll see that we can throw projectiles, and if it hits or lands close enough to a player, it will deal damage. However, there's one more thing to do. At the moment, we're not removing the projectiles from our dictionaries when they explode, and although it doesn't produce any errors, it's not ideal. In the projectile manager's explode method, remove the projectile from the dictionary right before we call the destroy method. Do the same in the server's projectile class's explode method. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. If you found it helpful, make sure to smash the like button and leave any feedback you've got down in the comments. I haven't entirely decided what we'll cover in the next tutorial, although I'm leaning towards some super basic server authoritative AI. If you don't want to miss that, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you're always notified when I upload another video. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.